our marriage is not to be entered into unadvisedly or lightly, but reverently, deliberately, and in accordance with the purposes which it was instituted by God. Into this holy union, these two persons have now come to be joined. If any of you can show just cause why they may not lawfully be married, speak now, or else forever hold your peace. You may kiss your brother. Point heavy. One, two, three, four. Blood gas is bad. Two, pH is seven point one. PO two is forty. PCO two is sixty. Thirty cc's bicarb. Three, four, five. Doctor. Are you giving 100% O2? Three, four. Are you? Two. Robin, take over. Five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two. Milligram atropine now. Flash card. Two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two. Pulse. Respirator. Don't ever give up on a patient of mine until I do. Doctor, th there is no reason, no medical authority to suggest... I am medical authority. And she's the reason. Dr. Grayson, I know my son's terminal. Yes. A lot of doctors wouldn't have... Thanks for giving us more time. He won't. Hey, Dad. Hi, guys. Back by 10, Mom. Make that a promise and not an estimate. Bye, Dad. Bye, boys. Now would be a good time. Dad? Huh? Could you help me come up with a science project? Science project. <laughs> I'm lousy at science. You're a medical researcher. I am? Am I any good at it? Dad! Hypothesis. Can a ten-year-old girl actually be tickled to death? No. Lillian! Clearly, the essential medical issue of our time. Oh, oh yes! Go, 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 Jenny! Robin. You know you don't mean that. You have to get out of my life, Norm. I've had you, enough. You said once a few years back that you could never get enough of me. I'm older. You're older? I'm wiser. What a team. Oh, will you stop it? I... You're not going to divorce Lillian, and she'll never divorce you. Lillian and I lead separate lives. Well, I want a whole life. 
I want kids and, and holidays and all of that, and we can't have that together. We have other things. Not the right things. I make you happy. Not anymore. Robin, you had a long day. Norm, you will you stop? I'm not happy. There's nothing more for us. I'm sorry. With terminals. They don't give a damn about paperwork. You may think admissions is an important, Dr. Grayson, but I don't I have time for this crap. It's very right? important, and you are responsible for your patients. Their lives, not their insurance forms. A hospital is a business. It must function like one to stay solvent. That's a job for bureaucrats and pencil pushers. Well, the way I see it, all prima donna doctors who think they're above paperwork should watch their step, because I'm about to start kicking butt and taking names. You have such a way with people. It's a gift. I can't believe we blew in the fourth quarter. We're ahead by nine points. You seem even more distracted today than usual, Norm. Really? Good. You'll learn something. I believe in miracles. Thanks for lunch. And Beth wanted me to invite you and your wife out to a small dinner for Dr. Wester next Wednesday. Charlie, Lillian's been here, what, twice in nine years. She's a very private person. She doesn't come to hospital events. Ah. Discriminating woman. Ah, oh, she just knows who she wants to spend time with. <clears throat> Select any three items on the table. <laughs> no, please, I'm a surgeon. I've seen enough ugly, hopeless things today. I'll save you the trouble. See you later. He's good. I'm improving. My resignation from Stanford. Why? I'm moving away. I don't understand. I got a grant to work at Beekman's Hospital. I know it's a big move, but I was hoping you'd come with me. Just the three of us? Lillian and I are getting divorced. After all these years, just not happy without you. Don't play games with me, Norm. Your family and your practice are here. It's no game. I'm leaving everything so you and I can start a real life together. I love you, Rob. Surprisingly neighborly of you, too. Okay, the next time I feel the urge to be neighborly, slap me until I'm sober. <laughs> I think you're nice. Well, you're nicer. I'd rather be cuddled up in bed with you. You would? Yeah, let's ditch the chicken, hit the floor, and belly crawl through the living room. They might not miss us, you know? Really? Mm -hmm. Okay, come on, you two. Just cooking. Ooh, Just I cook. see somebody who needs a refill. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So, Norm, mm. I understand you work a lot with children. Yeah, uh, kids with lung problems, mostly cystic fibrosis patients. Aren't they terminal? We're all terminal. <laughs> well, do you like the hospital staff here? Well, it's different than Stanford. How different? Like good different, bad different? Both. Mm. You happy at the health department? Yeah, very. You know, I, I wouldn't have gotten this job if it hadn't been for you. Hmm? What do you mean? <laughs> well, if you hadn't encouraged me all those years, I never would have finished my master's. Hmm. So actually, all this happiness is really your fault. Hmm, let's see. Oh, dinner. <laughs> 
Oh, well. <laughs> oh, your mail's here on the desk. There's something from one of your boys. Dear Dad, I'm really sorry you missed the game last Sunday. It was my best. I was MVP. I thought maybe from now on, I'd video the games. That way you won't miss anything. You'd kind of be there. Margaret is Robin Phelps. How are you? We heard Norm had a terrible accident. It's been close. He has a fractured pelvis. And I, I made them do a chest x-ray. They found broken ribs and a pneumothorax. He's lucky you're there. Is he stable? He's going to be okay. God, what a horrible way to spend your sabbatical. I think you almost pulled the plug on your respirator. Well, that might have been an overreaction. So... You tell me that you resign, but you're really in a six-month sabbatical. Yes. So I have for my entire life to find out that you lied Robin, to me. Robin, I didn't know if it would work out for me here. Norm, I trusted you. Why wouldn't you tell me the truth? Because I was afraid you wouldn't come with me. How could you be so selfish? Sometimes my work has to come first. Nobody knows better than I do how important your work is. But you made a commitment to me, too. I know. I was wrong. You're not divorcing Lillian, are you? Uh, don't, don't get paranoid. I'm not I moved paranoid. 500 miles away to be with you. I am not paranoid. What are you saying? That Lillian thinks I'm out to a very long lunch? Tell me now. Are you going back there or not? I don't know. All right, okay, let me talk to Jennifer now. Dad, I feel like you've been gone forever. It's only been a month. Now, promise me you won't get any older while I'm not looking. Are you sure you're okay? Of course I'm okay. Just a fender bender. Not even a scratch. You're leaving. Cutter is a downspouts needed some work. And you're leaving. Yes. This is it for us, Norm. Don't write me. Don't call me. You just leave me alone. You know, you're making a big mistake. You need me. <coughs> Margaret, it's my daughter Jennifer. Hi. Hi. Much as I hate to admit it, Stanford wasn't the same without your dad. Running too smoothly, was it? How'd you guess? That was hard being so far away from my kids. Well, welcome home. <sighs> Doing paperwork, Dr. Grayson? Hard to believe. Davey! 
I guess there's hope for even us hardcore prima donnas, huh? I thought you moved away. Didn't work out. Well, while you were gone, I started my own business. Well, then, I guess you finally got a boss who can handle you. It's a word processing and secretarial service. I have lots of clients here at the hospital. Good timing. I just finished an article. Want me to do the paperwork? I know you need the help. At last, a symbiotic relationship. <sighs> word processing for symbiosis may come later. The article's yours. If you'll have lunch with me. Actually, that's pretty appealing, but I never socialize with clients. Good policy. You're fired. <laughs> now, I know this French bistro with a bouillabaisse that will knock your panties off. Dr. Grayson, who says I'm wearing panties? Where am I coming on too strong? Maybe I should play hard again. <laughs> After six months of this, you think it'd get easy. No one ever said you were easy. They said you were worth it, but never, never easy. <laughs> yeah. How about Thursday? I can't. I'm swamped. Friday, then. Look at this guy. After eight. I've got to be at the hospital for a procedure at 10. Can't you leave work a little earlier? Norman, these days, I'm lucky to leave work at all. I've moved a mini refrigerator oh, yeah, and my coffee pot into the office. Now all I, all I need is cotton, some grapes, and I can sublet my apartment. Yeah, you do put in the hours, don't you? I work my buns off. Thank God that's an exaggeration. The loss of your buns would be a national tragedy. <laughs> As your doctor, I can assure you it's not healthy to work so much. Well, look who's giving advice. The man who responds to his beeper like a trained seat. <laughs> Katie, you're the most exciting woman I've ever known. <laughs> Just. Well, that's news to me. <laughs> Katie's a smart lady. She's not going to want a divorced workaholic full time. <laughs> Try not. Everybody knows that I'm not good enough for you. Yeah, we uh, tell them that all the time. Ah, uh, sorry. It's the ER. Well, you go ahead. I think I'm going to stay a while. I'm sure you wouldn't rather go home and cry in longer than you? Tough choice. You need me, beep I always do. Me calling you? No, I don't mind. Where have you been? You're never home. Well, I've been busy. You've been behaving yourself? Norm, I'm getting married. Married? Yeah. His name's Peter. He's a dentist. Glad. I'm, I'm glad. Um, I got an emergency. I, I, I'll call you back. There is no view. There is now. 
I went by your office. I had dinner with a friend. Are you seeing someone else? It's no secret how I feel about you, but I want to be married. So I think we shouldn't. No, no, no. Norman, wait. I've had a lot of sleepless nights thinking about us. Now, even though you say you want to marry me, the truth is I you do. don't know. Every time we set a date, you cancel it. The last time I'd already sent out invitations. Now, I won't let you do this to me again. It's humiliating. That damn beeper. Thanks to this beeper, you can reach me anytime, anywhere. Look, I am not a kid. I am done waiting. Either you set a real date, or it's over. I can't let you go. Do you, Katie, take Norman to be your lawfully wedded husband? To care for and cherish in good times and bad? sickness and health till death do you part I do do you Norman, take Katie to be your lawfully wedded wife to care for and cherish in good times and bad in sickness and in health till death do you part I do I now pronounce you husband and wife Congratulations. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Wedding pictures, I hope. There you go. Oh, Katie looks lovely. <laughs> no ring? Oh, I'm allergic to the metal. Oh? No time for honeymoon, huh? Nope. Well, I think you two are perfect for each other. <laughs> Libby, you're a great kid. But if you beat me again, I'm going to take away your pain medication. <laughs> Man, you bring a whole new meaning to the term sore loser. <laughs> think you can sleep yet? Never sleeping again. Oh, terrific. Studies show first you'll start to hallucinate. And they just go crazy. Crazy doesn't sound so bad. At least then I wouldn't have to think about dying all the time. You don't have to think about it. That's what you have me for. Man, you can't even win a simple game of blackjack. <clears throat> I guess on the bright side, dying young isn't so bad. At least I won't get soft and wrinkly. At least all my teeth won't fall out. I won't have to wander around the neighborhood like somebody's lost dog or something. I'm afraid I won't wake up. Hey. I'm going to be sitting right here while you sleep. So if you go into distress, I'll be right here. You won't leave? I won't even take a leak. <laughs> You promised you won't. Shut up. Go to sleep. Okay. That's my girl. bike ride with us. Great. I worked dinner off. <sighs> yes? 
This is your regular 7.15 dinner call. When do you want to meet? 15 minutes. Perfect. The hospital? Always. It's almost like having two wives. Be careful. Really wish you wouldn't go riding when it's dark. No, don't worry, Norman. It's well lit and we're big girls. Hi, Dad. Mom, he's hardly home anymore. I know. The hospital demands a lot of him. Come on. I will race you. Okay. Who's winning? Me? <laughs> hey, Doc. What do you feel like for mm, Something light. Well, you have been putting on weight. Hey. You better be careful. I don't want to have to trade you in for a sleeker model. <laughs> Doctor, check this medication before you go. It's a nice color, honey. You like it? Will you be back this evening? Marcy Albert's been unstable all day. Beat me. Okay. Mrs. Grayson. Pediatric funding drive was a huge success. Thanks for all your time and effort. Well, I was happy to do it. We really appreciate it. Good night, Doctor. Good night. Good night. Norm, Beth's coming in. Would you and your lovely wife like to join us for dinner? Uh, Charlie, my lovely wife would rather spend a quiet evening at home, wouldn't you, lovely wife? <laughs> it's been three years. I think you two should stop acting like newlyweds and get tired of each other like the rest of us. <laughs> we'll meet you at the bistro. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> really? I was 13, my mom caught Sally and me back behind the water tower, and I told her we were playing doctor, and from that moment forward, I felt that my future was decided. <laughs> so the entire medical community owes thanks for your considerable contribution to Sally Mae Hutchinson? And her cashmere sweaters. <laughs> I remember my first time. Ah, it was so cliche. It was the back seat of a car. <laughs> Radio was playing. The girl's name was Brenda Keller. Yeah, I thought the earth was moving. Actually, my foot hit the gear shift and we coasted 20 feet into the side of a house. <laughs> Norm? Ah, uh, to Sally Mae Hutchinson and Brenda Keller, who broke us in for the really classy women that followed. <laughs> oh, Norm. <laughs> he always knows the right thing to say. But where is Sally now? That's what I want to know. <laughs> I've already called the suppliers. We need six Well, I'm more. starting to wonder about your accounting system. In 30 years, no one has ever questioned my accounting system. Excuse me. Oh, I'm Dr. Grayson. Dr. Grayson? How can I help you? Actually, I was going to help you. Uh, you're new here, right? Yes. <laughs> well, Margaret was here when you were still peeing in your pampers, and she says that we need 60 uh, whatever. She's right. Too sick, Norm. No, no. We can't save all of them. I can't save any of them. This is what we do every day. You've got to learn to let go. Can't have it all. Watch me. Phenomenal taste in clothes and women. Fits you perfectly. Who knows my shape better than you? <laughs> Nobody, I hope. <laughs> Surprise gifts at my office could spoil me. A goal of mine. Well, I like a guy who sets goals. Let's have lunch at the mall. The mall? I heard Lillian's running some kind of safety booth there. And? And I thought we should go and meet her. I don't think so. Lots of people get divorced, Norman. I don't see any reason why we can't be civilized. Come on, please. 
I want to. It's not nice for us to parade around in front of her. So? We won't hold hands. Okay, I will. Thanks. Go in. Hi. <laughs> You've heard me speak of Katie before. Uh, sure. Well, nice to meet you, finally. Uh, yes, and you too. So? Oh, the bicycle helmet law. Good for you. We could save a lot of kids if people would just start taking bicycle safety seriously. Well, I think it's wonderful of you to give them your time like this. Well, things don't change by themselves. You know, I've actually never even owned a bicycle, <laughs> then I guess it would be hard to sell you a helmet. Hmm? <laughs> Lillian, would you like to join us for lunch? I can't leave the booth, Norman. I don't have anybody to cover for me. Another time. Nice meeting you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye now. Norman, now I don't know why you thought we wouldn't hit it off. She's a lovely woman. Yes, she is. Michael, roll the boat ashore. Hallelujah. Let me hear you. Michael, roll the boat ashore. Hallelujah. Take a high five. Sister, help to not sail. Hallelujah. Sister, When I was a bachelor, I Someone get the hook. The man doesn't know when to quit. I Well, whatever you say, you're the MC. <laughs> well, I'll get the eclairs. I'll get another drink. And I'll help. God, come on, come on, come on. Is that mad? He likes to be center stage. Mm, that's a little childish, I'd say. There is a lot of the child in Norm. There's also a caring, thoughtful, fabulous man who's a brilliant doctor. You're really happy, aren't you? Norm's special. It's easy to overlook his idiosyncrasies. <laughs> Hi. Lillian. I just finished the 1,800 things that I had to do today, and I suddenly realized that this would be a perfect time to run by the car dealer. Can you do it? Sure, if we hurry. Forgive me, love, no one. Not even a phone call. I left work and raced over here to have lunch with you. Sometimes I just can't control you things. You aren't the only one with responsibilities, Dora. You're right. I'm really sorry. Did you talk to your kids about coming for dinner? They won't come. They're loyal to their mother. They're bitter about the divorce. I'm their stepmother. If they get to know me, they'll see I'm not a monster. You know, sometimes when the light hits you a certain way, you do look a little monstery. I am not kidding, Norman. I want to meet your children. Katie, I'm tired. I really don't need any more stress in my life. I'm bitter. 
buried in stress. Yeah, me too. Norm, thanks for being there for me through my divorce. A piece of cake. How's Johanna? She's handling it pretty well, actually. Kids are more durable than we are. I need a break. I lost another kid today. Norm, I'm sorry. I know what that does to you. Well, this research project will give me a chance to focus on something else for a while. Why do you always have to go out of town to do research? Just a short plane ride, but if it bothers you, I won't go. We just have so little time together as it is. Things will slow down, then we'll buy an RV, travel across the country, and nag each other. By then you'll be wearing dentures and complaining about spicy food. And you'll be the sexiest woman this side of the Mississippi in support hose. Sweet talk. Don't let go. never did let go. When you married the dentist, I parked across the street and watched your wedding reception from my car. You did? The band was lousy. <laughs> <laughs> I can still make you smile. These past few years, you've... You've been such a good friend. I don't think there's anything more for us than that. The only time I'm... I'm not ready to explode is when I'm with you. I know. Please don't punish us both for mistakes I made years ago. How am I supposed to trust you again? This time it's different. We'll get married. <gasps> what about Katie? We're driving each other crazy. We're both ready to call it quits. I'll transfer here as soon as I can. We'll raise Johanna together. I don't know. Just ask yourself if you still love me. If the answer's no, I'll walk out that door. You'll never see me again. Wedge. Check out of the bed. The miracle cure. It won't be that simple. I wish she didn't have to go back tomorrow. Mm. Me too. I'll get transferred here soon. I hope you'll be happy working here. Well, as long as you're here, I'm happy. <laughs> but for now, I will have to make do as every other weekend. I better store up.
Katie. Did Lillian suffer any permanent hearing loss? I'm snoring again. Honey, I got a big client coming by tomorrow. I'd hope to be conscious for that. I'll go sleep in the on-call room at the hospital. No, no. You already spend more than half your nights uh, in the uh, hospital no. as it is. You no, can't make, you just it, got you back can't make a success people. of your work if you're exhausted. Come on. I didn't get married to sleep all along. No, it's only temporary. Saying that for four years. Katie, you know it makes sense. And I'll be at the hospital for early morning rounds. I'll get my work done sooner. I'll be home to you earlier in the evening. We have the entire rest of our lives to deal with my snoring. Tonight, get some sleep. I love you, Katie. Beat me if you need me. your trip? Uneventful. Hmm. I guess the day has started. Hmm. Like it or not. Norman, there's a flood. You gotta get home fast. The whole house, the, the, the pipes. Katie? Katie, where are you? Katie? Is the plumber here? Katie? Kat I've been a very bad girl. Oh. And you know what? What? I just... You are incorrigible. <laughs> I'm going to wear you out, Dr. Grayson. I don't wear out. Seven over 83. Good. It's a pleasure to work with you, Dr. Grayson. I'm always on nights, so I rarely get to see you. You did some good work tonight. We brought you some coffee. Thanks. You've been sitting without a break for hours. He's doing really well. I finally get to see what you do every night when you should be in bed with your wife. <laughs> I guess you get to see him more than I do. Nurse Jacobs was just saying that, weren't you? Yes, I was. What? Katie, I told you about this trip weeks ago. You did not. Yeah. And even if you did, my father's in there. How can you think about leaving town? You've been driving me crazy to meet my children. Now, I planned this vacation with him, hoping to talk about you and break the ice. I thought that's what you wanted. Oh, it is. But now, I need you now. Your father's going to be fine. I'd never leave if I didn't believe that. Now, you know how hard it is for me to arrange time with my kids. I don't believe this. I'll call you every day. You can beat me day or night. I know, Norman. It's just... I bought the tickets. I paid for the rooms. But if it makes you unhappy, I just... It's not worth it. I'll call him right now and tell him I just can't. Wouldn't be the first time I've had to cancel on him. No, Norman. Hmm. Don't.
Mr. Wee again? How can you stand it? I can't. It drives me crazy. Why didn't you say no? Well, I don't want to be the cause of any disappointment between Norm and his kids. They hate me as it is. I'd be a lot less understanding. When I married Norm, I knew he was a doctor and a father. Hardly seems fair for me to complain about that now. Are you sure that's all that's going on? What's that supposed to mean? Norm loves me, Jenna. I know. He does. Norman, thank you for not letting the hospital interfere with our vacation. Oh, no possibility of that. Look, look. Oh. Oh. Since when did Jenny become Jean-Claude Keeley? She was on the ski team last winter. You're kidding. Oh, Norman. When did that happen? <laughs> hey. oh, what a great run. That was rad. Why don't you cheer up, Jenna? <laughs> The ski patrol wants me to take you to the bunny slope, Seth. Obviously, the altitude has gone to her head. Uh, I'm only trying to save you from serious injury. Presently, the only one at risk, my dear, is you. Oh, really? That's right. You hear me? Yeah. You're saying that I can't ski? Yes! Are you? <laughs> oh, you're going to pay, you're going to pay. The nookie, the nookie. Ah, get out of here. <laughs> Hey, next time you guys should try coming down on top of your skis. It's such a family oh, affair. Oh, really? Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you make great kids. Uh, One. Oh, very funny. Two. Stop it. Uh, oh, yes! Three. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Stop. Now, I'm more crack about my weight, and you'll need an orthopedist. Okay. Okay? Okay. Mm -hmm. That's it. Sorry. Yeah. <sighs> Come here. Come here. Come here. Oh, 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 you want to put her up? No. No, I give up. No more. I give up. Okay. Okay. You let me up now? Good girl. Oh, oh you're testy. I thought you people were supposed to be jolly. Good. No one messes with my pager. Up. I might have to spank you. <gasps> promises, promises. No, 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 yep. no, 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 well, I absolutely have to attend a conference Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday of next week. You're going to have to come home and take care of Johanna. I don't know if that's workable. Honey, you haven't taken time off in ages. Uh, you can't imagine how hard that is for me to do. I understand. But I've never left her alone before, and there have been so many changes in her life, I, I don't want her to feel deserted. You're right. Let me check it out with the powers that be, and I'll call you back. Okay. Bye-bye. Oh. Now what? Oh, a doctor I work with, he asked me to fill in for him at a Boy Scout camp for a few days next week. <laughs> no, that was easy. Uh, Katie, I'd like to help him out. He came in on his son's birthday to expedite all that lab work on your dad after he had his heart attack. We can't take three days for ourselves, but you want to go to a Boy Scout camp? I got the perfect solution. Come with me. We'll make a vacation out of it. River waiters, bug spray, outhouses, dozens of nine-year-old boys. Tempting, but I'll pass. I won't have any fun if you're not with me. Good. I heard Mountaineer can really take the weight off. Oh. <laughs> 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 
I'm telling him, huh? I'm leaving. Now, I don't want to have to call a maintenance crew when I get back, so take care of things. No sweat. No sweat. Oh, well, isn't that a nice expression for a little girl? Yeah, and I won't even charge you for that. <laughs> I made three casseroles. They're in the freezer. All you have to do is heat them up. You know how to do that? And my emergency number is on the refridge. And please, no junk food. I promise. <laughs> what is going on? Nothing. Nothing. Nothing? Nothing? Nothing. You have fun at the Easter party tomorrow, sweetie. I'm going to miss you. Okay, Mom, go. <laughs> go? Mm-hmm. Go. Mm -hmm. oh. Bye, Robin. Why do I feel like I should get a sitter for you two? <laughs> okay, well, you have fun. Bye. That's pretty accurately the question of the day around here. It's been circulating. I'm worried about your reputation, Norm. A wedding invitation? <laughs> I'm sorry, I shouldn't laugh. I, I know it's serious, but uh, Robin is so obsessed. I mean, I guess it'd be flattering if it wasn't so crazy. I never know what she's going to do next, but this... Uh, Got to keep your sense of humor about these things. Norm, I just got off call. I need some food. Can't. I'm doing my taxes. Hire someone to do that. I have a few uh, complications. I was thinking about a cruise. Huh. I've never been on a cruise. Well, if you get all the information, I'll see when I can manage a few days away. I don't. Uh... Mark! <laughs> hey, this is my son, Mark. I'm so happy to meet you. I've been hearing about you for such a long time. Oh, yeah? Well, don't believe everything my dad says. I'm actually a great guy. <laughs> Would you like to join us for lunch? Ooh, I'd never come here hungry. Everyone knows hospital food will kill you. See, I told you he was smarter than I am. <laughs> um, Dad, here's some more tax receipts that Mom found. I was going to drop them in your office, but I didn't know it might be growing in there. <laughs> he gets a sense of humor from my side of the family. <laughs> well, Katie, it was very nice meeting oh, you. Oh, you too, and I hope to see you again. You too. See you, Dad. Yeah. Bye, Mark. Okay. <laughs> How about that? He actually came. You knew he was coming? Oh, I was hoping. That's a start, right? Right. Are you still doing Lillian's taxes? Oh, yeah. She needs the help. Norm, that's why God made accountants. Oh, I've got a procedure schedule. I'll see you for dinner. All right, bye. Katie, hmm. we need to talk. What? One of the girls at the switchboard told me that Norm's been taking calls from someone else claiming to be Mrs. Grayson. That's her name. That's Lillian's name. Ex-wives do call their ex-husbands. Oh, Betsy on the switchboard doesn't think it's Lillian. Well, maybe Betsy on the switchboard should worry more about her weight and her ugly wardrobe and less about other people's personal lives. I'm not going to put up with all this traveling and these insane hours forever. Neither will I. We need to spend more time together. Norman? No. Are you having an affair? Oh, for God's sake, Katie. 
When would I have time for an affair? Yes or no? Of course not. You know how I feel about trust in a marriage. If you don't trust me, we have nothing. And if you screw around on me, I will leave you in a flash. After all I give to you and to my patients, and this is what I get. Accusations! I just don't want to get hurt. Katie, I swear on my mother's grave, every free second I have, I spend with the wife I love. <coughs> something stinks. I've got at least three different Mrs. Grayson's calling it's here. It's not your place to speculate on the personal lives of the doctors at this hospital. Look, honey, I know dynamite when I see it, and this thing is gonna blow. Didn't Dr. Grayson treat your little boy? Yeah, my son thinks he's the coolest thing since Ninja Turtles, and Dr. Grayson still calls to see how he's doing. Personally, I like the guy. That's why I thought you're a friend. Maybe you should talk to him. It would be inappropriate for me to burst into his personal affairs. Uh, it'll be even more inappropriate when the crap hits the grapevine. We need an yes, I, mean, yes, I, I guess it got lost in the shuffle. It's embarrassing to get collection calls at my office. Now, Norman, if you can't remember to make the mortgage payments, then I will do it. I'm just a little behind. Three months? Norman, if we have money problems, then you've got to tell me. We don't. Then what have you been doing with the bills? Making paper airplanes, mostly. This is serious, Norman. It scares me that our finances are in chaos. I've been busy saving lives. Should I call for a straitjacket? No. No, I just can't believe that we are standing here arguing about paperwork. <laughs> Shades of the past. Oh, Norman. What? I will take over all our personal finances, okay? <laughs> and I will start by going through all this stuff right here. No, no, no. No, I can do it. It doesn't look uh, like uh, it. Norman, this No, no, stop that, will you? Uh, Oh. Hi, Katie. I can come back. Oh, no. Come in. We're finished. I will handle the bank. Okay. <sighs> nice to see you, Margaret. Bye, Katie. With life so short, I think you women should spend less time sweating the little things. Perhaps. Mm. Oh. What's on your mind? Some people have noticed that things may have gotten a little messy for you. <laughs> Sign of a great mind, I hear it. Sure, they're exaggerating, because I know the mess couldn't possibly be as deep as rumor has it. Can't trust rumors. My instinct is there may be a lot of chatter and some questions raised. I see. Perhaps it's time to clean house. You think? I do. <laughs> Thank you. Anytime.
Excuse me, have you seen Dr. Grayson? No, ma'am. See, I knew you were sleeping with another girl. You're checking on me. Forgive me. You are a brilliant, loving, wonderful man, and I swear I will never doubt you again. It is Christmas Eve. And not everyone gets to spend it in the airport. There are no more flights to San Francisco until tomorrow morning. God, Norm, we have got people coming over. Well, good. At least you won't be alone. Norman. I'll get there as soon as I can. Yes. That's a good girl, right? Santa wouldn't give you the doll you asked for. Oh, Mom, there's no Santa. What? No Santa? Gregory Angelo, there's no such thing as that. He did? Well, do you think Gregory D'Angelo is right? Yeah, yeah, I do. You want to make people don't break your neck? Good thing you're a nurse. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Merry Christmas! <laughs> Two patients who coded last night. Someone covered for me, but I have to show up today. Mom, you can't. It's Christmas. Oh, it's Christmas for those critical kids in the hospital, too. For some of them, it's our last Christmas. We're so fortunate. Two o'clock is not morning. It's 
morning somewhere. It hurts to be alone on Christmas. Katie, I'm so sorry. I never would have planned it this way. I, I sat all night in the airport hoping for a miracle. No more flying around near the holidays. Never again. Never again. Well, tell me something, Dr. Grayson. Anything. What is it about you that's so damn appealing? I'm a man desperately. Norman. Oh. Katie, I gotta run to the hospital. No. No, I got some really critical kids in there. Kids who are having their last Christmas. Oh, I'll, I'll be quick. Did you get to see your own kids today? No, I didn't want to take time away from us. You have to be better about that. I bought these for them. Oh, Katie. That's so sweet of you. Well, it is Christmas. Oh, thanks. Want to take some pie with you? No, no, no. I had a big breakfast before I got on the airplane. I made lunch with you. I'm stuffed. Please, Daddy, missed almost the whole day. I'm sorry. Oh, Merry Christmas. Oh, well, finally. I'm sorry. Did you walk the 500 miles? Merry, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. Christmas. And we have to sit down right now. Mm. I've been holding it. Oh. Come on, kids. Come on and sit down. Oh, traffic. <sighs> and you better be hungry. <sighs> Starved. Your wife is on line one. Hello? Surprise! I got one of the neighbors to babysit, and I will be there in a couple of hours. No. No. No, there's, 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 there's no place for you to stay. Uh... You can't sleep with me here at the hospital. So we'll get a hotel. Can't afford one. That's not true. I, I thought you'd be thrilled. You don't want to see me? Norm, what's going on? I'm just... I'm so totally exhausted. I, I, I can't think straight. Of course you should come. Please, come. So what are you telling me, that I'm imagining things? Yes. Am I imagining you didn't want me to come here? Yes. And am I imagining that I found that check for me paying Katie's credit card bills? It's part of our divorce settlement. And am I imagining that your driver's license still has Lillian's address on it? I do that. So when I'm in town there, I can use the public parks and the libraries. You know all this. Robin, you're beginning to scare me. God, is it me? I mean, am I going crazy? <laughs> you know, I... I 
think you just can't get over being a, a mistress. Honey, maybe you ought to talk to someone. Uh, a therapist. I could find you a good one. Well, I've had a relationship of one kind or another with Norm for the past 17 years. All of my adult life. Excuse me. Maybe he's right. Maybe I am imagining things. Let's forget what he says. What do you think? Are you imagining things? I don't know. Maybe I am. And maybe you're not. It would be better if we knew for certain. Unless your real fear is of what the truth will bring. Don't you see, I can't win either way. Peace of mind is how you win. With the advent of computers, these sorts of searches are getting easier and easier. What did you find? Water. Mr. Shimadza, please. I suppose you had some suspicions or you wouldn't have come here. Yes. There are no divorces on file. No divorces? Dr. Grayson apparently has three residences and three wives. Then I'm not crazy. Ma'am, this is a felony. Thank you. Good luck, Mrs. Grayson. It's Robin Phelps. I can't collect until you finish the work. Excuse me, Dr. Grayson. You forgot to sign off on this transfer. Robert. I'm not crazy. I'm not imagining things. In fact, there's nothing wrong with me. These are the annulment papers. This is a restraining order to keep you away from me and Johanna. It's over. We can work this out. I know we can. It's over, Norm. Have you spoken to anyone else? You clean up your own life. Dr. Grayson, room 431. Dr. Grayson, room 431, code blue. Clear! Clear! Come on, man. Still no pulse. Clear! Come on, Lenny! Nothing. More epi. One and two and three and four and five and more epi! Go on. One, two and three and four and five. No one. one, two, and three, and four, and come on, Lib. One, and two, and three, and four, and five, and one, two, three, Norm. four, and five, and Norman! Four. Norman! Come on, Norm! It's been an hour and 43. It's over. Let her go. I can't. I know how good you are. I've seen you work miracles. But there are no miracles to be had today. I know. Is everything all right with you personally? <laughs> yeah. 
You have no idea how screwed up a life can be until you've seen mine. Norman. Go home. call his wife. Who's that? That's Lillian Gracie. Hello? Hi. Oh, it's been a long time. What's wrong? But it's going to be okay. Katie. It's going to be okay. Katie. I know it's put on extra weight, but we can take it off in a couple of months with diet. And Norm's it's dead, Katie. No, he's not. He died of a heart attack. He can't be. Hang on, Katie. It gets worse. Norm died at Lillian's house. She signed the death certificate as his wife. They're divorced. They... they never got divorced. She said they never even discussed it. She's arranged for an immediate cremation, and the ashes are being taken back to the family farm. You know, this is crazy. She's lying. We've got to talk to Norm. Mrs. Jenner. Where's Norm? Oh, God, please let me talk to Norm. called his brother in Iowa. Roger. He'd never heard of you. Norm told me his brother was institutionalized as a man of depressor. Well, I guess that's one way to keep you from contacting him. God, wake me up. Listen, Katie. If Norm didn't divorce Lillian, then your marriage isn't legal. Oh, don't you say that to me. No one had better say that to me. He's been my husband for six years. I know. Everyone in the hospital knows. But I understand Lillian may already be talking to a lawyer. Listen, Katie, you've got to protect yourself. Get the papers from his office. You may need to prove things in court. Katie. 
Were you having an affair with Norman? No. Norman and I were married in 89. How could you marry my husband? I imagine Lillian's asking the same question. I found out a few weeks ago. Why didn't you tell me? I thought he should. Six years. How could no one have known? Think of who he was. Even if someone would have thought it, no one would have believed it. Lillian's going to sue to collect her community property. And since Norman and I bought our home together, I may lose it. He's so totally screwed up my credit that even my business is in danger. I still have to tell my daughter. And what do I say to her? She really loves him. I loved him. Still do. Do you remember? Excuse me. You're Robin Phelps, aren't you? Yes. As you can imagine, the hospital and the university are trying to maintain a low profile on this thing. We'd appreciate it if you wouldn't attend a memorial. We feel it. Norman, I've already said our goodbyes. So his heart broke? Yeah. Is he totally gone? No, not totally. We'll still remember him. So that means he's still here, sort of. Oh. Joanna, there are going to be some people that say some really terrible things about Norm. Why? Because Norm got himself into some trouble and he just couldn't get himself out. Oh. Remember that time you lied to your teacher and you were afraid to tell me? Yeah. It didn't mean you didn't love me, did it? No. Well, just because Norm lied doesn't mean that he didn't love you because he did. He loved you very much. So no matter what anyone says, it's all right for you to love him and miss him. Okay. I've been a patient of Dr. Grayson since I was diagnosed with CF at eight years of age. I grew up knowing that when I died, Norm would be there holding my hand. I guess I never knew how much comfort that that thought brought me. I just want to say that there wasn't a bigger heart or a better doctor. She counted herself lucky. Day, night, weekends, holidays, didn't matter. Dr. Grayson was always there for my daughter. He fought for her life right up until her last breath. And now I know in my heart that we are lucky. Because wherever my little girl is, Norm's taking care of her again. We all love Norm. No matter what. I know that he loved us, too. Before we leave, I'd like to ask the nurses from pediatrics to distribute these flowers to that wing. Norm would have liked that. Katie, I'm 
so sorry. I, I don't know how he got away with it. He didn't. It killed him. 